Let's now cross back to Saxon World where uh, our reporter Kenny Mapanga is there. Kenny, a very good morning to you. I believe you have a family friend with you there. Well, good morning to you and uh, the viewers at home. Uh, we can confirm that the body of the late uh, anti-apartheid activist has arrived. We're drawing closer to that um, official funeral that will be held at West Park Cemetery. And while we continue to reflect on the rich legacy of uh, Mr. Aziz Pahad, this also extends to him as a person. What was he like uh, to his loved ones? To unpack this further, I'm joined by Mr. Hanif Randera, a close family friend, and uh, we understand that Dr. Pahad also mentored you. Uh, could you tell us a bit about that relationship and what he was as an individual to you? Thank you and good morning to all your viewers and all the friends and family of Aziz Pahad. Uh, I had the privilege of knowing Aziz as a young child when he was still in Backer Street and then subsequently in London. Um, Aziz was always a, a very friendly, happy um, and always engaging person. Um, he loved dealing with people. South Africa was very much in his, in his, in his prominence and what happens in South Africa. Uh, I had the privilege of spending some time with him in the last few months, uh, watching him slowly go away. Uh, and again, he had never complained about anything. He went off peacefully and it was a very, very sad and um, melancholy occasion itself. Uh, Aziz was... Uh, a person that made everybody feel comfortable and would allow anybody and everybody in his home. And he started his journey along with his brothers uh, quite early. Um, you were able to witness uh, some of that uh, fight against the apartheid regime, which extended beyond the borders of the country and continued, um, or service to the country rather, continued in the democratic dispensation. I was a little bit younger at that time. I mean, a bit younger than Aziz. I watched from far because I was still a young boy. I knew the family in Backer Street, went to the house a few times. Really the relationship started when I went to London and I met Aziz and Isup there and saw what they were doing fighting against apartheid itself. Uh, their life was about the struggle and how South Africa would change. Uh, it was definitely their, their cause. A huge loss uh, for the country. Um Absolutely. A, a, a terrible loss to the country and an intellect that is amazing. What Aziz had did done to the, the, the Durko and the foreign affairs portfolio was amazing. I think he put South Africa back on the map and effectively uh, gave us a voice uh, in the world itself. And you spoke about him personally mentoring you um, in your life, uh, in your adult life. Can you talk us through that as well? Sorry, I mean, I'm mentoring maybe a bit too far, but I mean... Every engagement I had with him was about him as a person and him about the struggle in South Africa. And obviously his knowledge of South Africa and the ANC itself was basically sent to us all, all very soon. We all remember that very well itself. And lastly, following uh, his sterling contribution to the country, um, did you ever have conversations about the current uh, state of the nation and what were his thoughts uh, leading up to his passing? We always have conversations about the current state of... Uh, look, he wasn't a very happy man with the current state of affairs, but he was a loyal member of the ANC, and he always wanted to work within the structures of the ANC and get involved internally to resolve things. And I think that was always what he had to do. I, I do think there were times that we all criticised the situation. Obviously, all of us are concerned about what's going on in the country, and certainly he was very, very concerned. Thank you. And what he, did he pass away happy? He went off very peacefully and he was in no pain. Mm. Thank, you. Right, thank you so much. That was a close family friend of Dr. Aziz Pahad, uh, just giving oh. us a bit of a reflection of the man, the personal character of Aziz Pahad.